Hello everyone, Josh first back again bringing you guys some more loon and today we got some new weekly loon news and there is a lot of it. Believe it or not, there's over 30 different things here in this weekly loon news. You can find it for yourselves inside the app. Just go to the events tab from the main lobby and then you'll find it under news. It should be one of the top two things. So definitely go check it out for yourselves. So what do we got? So they're going to be making some changes or looking into some changes for Trend 11 and 12, which is really awesome. 13 and 14 is actually going to have some new gimmicks and strategies, which is going to hopefully add for some new variety. Um, with Cardia's nerf, which of course you can see there under number two, um, we definitely need some changes to Trent. Um, mostly it's just the mobs. I feel like personally what I would do for the change would be just to remove the, the uh, ability of the boss to remove your buffs. Take that out and then lower the mob's HP and that's it. I feel like that's all you need to do for stage 11 and 12. That'll allow for different team comps to go in because I don't think anybody wants to see the same three or four heroes used in every bit of content in a game, especially in these new boss fights. So I feel to add a little bit of variety, which is a word that's not really used too much in gotchas, to go ahead and just you know maybe make those couple changes um, potentially. That's... That's just what I would do personally. And again, this is going to be all into the new big, massive version 2.2 update coming later this month. Just so you guys know. And a lot of you already at this point know that Cardia was nerfed. We just mentioned it. Um, she can only go up to 100% now of her base attack stat. So even with Weiwei's S3 stacked on top of it, it's not going to affect her base attack. So if you even have her around plus 5 and you're lucky to get her to somewhere around 10k attack, she can go all the way up to 20k essentially um, so this is going to definitely mitigate your damage output for um, game modes such as World Boss, Rift, and of course Boss Fights. So you definitely have to change your uh, gameplay up. Maybe you might even consider recalling her when the recall system comes later this month and get your assets back that you've invested into her and go ahead and invest into some other heroes. One hero that has just been becoming very popular recently is Lilith. So maybe she's a unit that you might consider. She's just very good being paired up with a male DPS character. So you might want to go ahead and consider running Lilith going forward for these trends and some of these newer strong bosses that we might be getting. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But as um, soon as Cardia's nerfs were mentioned, a lot of people started, you know, looking around through all the different units to see what could kind of compensate for that. And a lot of people are leaning towards Lilith. So Lilith might be getting some love. So there you guys go. And I know a lot of you love Lilith's skill descriptions too. All you guys out there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some women too, who knows. Um, so we got our hacker modder mass band coming. That's going to be great. You know, keep that ongoing. Just get rid of the, ha the hackers and the modders. We don't need them. Um, Dokkan Battle suffers from that for five years. We just, we don't need it. Uh, late September update plans. We have some major update plans that we'd like to share. Air battle content balancing in order to move away from the one-shot meta. Thank you so much for that. I'd like slower PvP. Uh, new boss battle floors proto. You know, we already knew that was going to come. They're probably going to be going in order then, which means the dragon's going to be very, very, very far away. I would say. Um, Chaos Tower for the October season update. Um, I already looked into some of those rewards. I've been getting another video talking about those rewards. The rewards for the new Chaos Tower hard mode are nuts. Um, Alliance Battle regular season will commence. World Boss revamp. New growth system dimensional board. New difficulty for the Light Trade Dungeon to increase class seed, which is going to be very nice. We'll start getting five or more seeds now per run every day. That's going to be awesome. Uh, visual customization die system, which we'll actually show a video of later on in today's video. will be down here at the bottom of the news. Very, very cool. You should check it out. And it also confirms they're using Unity 5. For those of you who don't know, that's the game engine that they're using. Um, I already knew that, but some of you didn't. And now you know because of the die system will show that. So uh, pretty cool that they're using one of the two best mainstream engines right now uh, alongside Unreal Engine 4. All right, 2019. Almost said 2009. <laughs> We're going back in time, guys. Uh, update roadmap, visual customization, costumes, co-op content, which is the biggest takeaway from this entire news update. Co-op is coming to Elune. Real-time content, which could be uh, tied into the co-op and maybe PvP. Growth system, um, we will soon post <clears throat> excuse me, more update plans in the community each week that will cover all these important updates. We're going to be getting that co-op information next week. So possibly as early as Monday of next week, we might be getting some more information, some juicy info on a new co-op system. Hopefully it's not just World Boss or anything like that. Hopefully it's like a lot of different content. That would be awesome. Even co-op PvP would be pretty tight, let me tell you. Um, why do you not advertise Eloon? So basically they're going to be trying to up the game's advertisement, which we really need. The game's player base is really small, and it's getting smaller 
um, we need to increase the size that we need to get in the 500k 1 million plus downloads we need to get those numbers up because this really is a good game um, and a lot of youtubers um, need to see those views to keep continually to cover the game so we definitely need to get those numbers up um, so they're going to be advertising more on YouTube. Hopefully that means myself, Tag Tone, K Gaming, Fort Misery, other YouTubers that's been covering the game. Hopefully we get, um, you know, those sponsorship deals and stuff like that. Try and, you know, push this game as really as hard as we can. And then they're also going to be using their own social media pages, you know, their forums, their cafe, their Facebook pages, Google Hangouts. I'm um, not, not Google Hangouts, Google Plus is what I meant to <laughs> say. <laughs> Google Hangout. Yeah, they're going to be getting in Google Hangouts. I mean, they could. They could make a Google Hangout. Why not? Um, to kind of bring more players into the game. So that's going to be really cool. And they're also planning a collaboration with another game as well. Um, that's interesting. Now, they said another game. They did not say anime. So that might be a little bit of a letdown for a lot of you, including myself. But then again, it could also be a big thing. What if they collabed with Fairy Tale? That would be dope. Fairy Tale is a huge game right now in Japan. It's not come to global yet. And honestly, Fairy Tale would fit the art style of the Loon perfectly. Imagine playing as Lucy. I know you guys would love that. And you ladies out there might want to play as Grey or Natsu. And think of this they could even make a collab boss fight where we're taking on Acnologia. Like, come on, guys. We got to make it happen. We all we need to sign a petition. We need to make this happen. Fairy Tale collab or nothing. Let's go. <laughs> Um, but now they might also collab with some other um, games that also would just don't do Guilty Gear. Please don't do Guilty Gear. Don't do Guilty Gear. Please. Um, but now that but since they said a game, I mean, that just opens the doors to a lot of possibilities. It could be League of Legends because this is, I mean, they're really pushing the Korean side of this game. Um, you know, they got the cafe and stuff like that, taking a lot of the feedback, which is, of course, getting translated into these updates. And the biggest game in Korea, South Korea, I should say is league of legends and it has been for a long time so maybe we'll get a collab with league of legends which is what i thought was going to get with epic 7 but never happened they gave us guilty gear instead which was a big letdown for me um but league of legends i don't really play it much uh, i'm very well aware of it i've seen it. i've played it a little bit back in the day i just don't really follow it but i would not mind that because that would be good for the korean player base which would hopefully also translate to being good for the global player base because league of legends is a big global game and i mean big it's the biggest in korea um, but it's definitely big worldwide. So, I mean, it would not, it would be a pretty safe bet to collab with, um, if they'd like to. There's also other games out there, too, that are also based on anime that I would not mind. But my personal favorite would be if they could somehow collab with Fairy Tale. Bleach would be pretty cool, too. Honestly, Bleach would also work. Um, collab with Bre uh, Bleach Brave Souls. I'd be down for that. But we'll see what happens. Um, air battle, defend, rewards, and attack system. Or, I'm sorry, attack fail system. So, basically, they want to give you points now um for your defense winning and make you lose points for your attack failing which would encourage players to take pvp a little bit more serious instead of just clicking auto uh, because then you could lose points and get deranked and then lose out on gems so you don't want to do that all right new user rewards are coming we are always considering ways to help new players so basically they're going to be adding new packs for you know beginner packs for new players they're going to be adding new additional beginner rewards and stuff like that hopefully that also is rewards that we can get as players who've been playing since day one as well that'd be awesome so, you know, that's always good to try and introduce new players to the game by easing their adjustments by like, hey, you can get this and this and this and this. It will help you get along, get a nice little jump start so you don't feel so left behind for missing all these other events, which we'll also get back to on number 10. All right, max trans uh, send limit. So basically, they want to, they want to do a new growth system um, so that, you know, plus five isn't the only thing that you can do. They, at this time, do not want to go to plus six or higher. I hope they never do that. That just just please don't do that i would rather take my additional dupes and trade them in for seeds or something i feel like that would be okay and a very fair compensation um or even legendaries or epic books you know either maybe books and seeds i don't know whatever you guys want to do with it but they're adding a growth system that's going to allow us to do individual growth for our character so no character will be the same as any other character in the entire game because everyone's going to be building their characters up differently um, probably using like some kind of skill point system with maybe a skill tree but instead of being a skill tree, it's going to be just for base stats. A lot of other games do that as well nowadays. Um, it kind of branches out into all these, like, it's like a spider web effect. And that would be really cool to see that. Um, I'd love that because then no character is going to be the same as any other. And it just adds a little bit more exclusivity to each player, making everyone feel a little bit different. Um, I'm all for that. Also, Season 2, we are preparing Awakened content, which will accompany visual changes. 
Um, now it says it will accompany. That doesn't mean that's the only thing that's going to come with it. So awaken content. I'm not too sure about that. Hopefully it's not like some kind of like awaken system where you got to pay or get some kind of exclusive items that are going to be locked behind a paywall or very hard to get free to play. We'll have to see um what that's gonna do but i do like that we're gonna be getting visual changes so it's gonna make your characters feel special for all the hard work you put into and making them a plus five or whatever you're gonna have this cool you know design it's gonna you know just say hey you did a lot of hard work here's a cool design for your character so i just feel like that's pretty nice um dimension event difficulty issue basically it's gonna be like it's not gonna be like technically a rotation um per se but it's gonna be like a way you can go back and do old events if you miss them so this is gonna be really good for new players as well and players that have been playing for a while that maybe had to had thing, things come up in their personal life and they had to take some time off the game or something they missed an event they can go back and do it now that's awesome to be honest um they also did some changes here adventure mode for hard difficulty has been set to be higher than the hard difficulty on ice road in adventure um even after the events end we are planning on adding a replay so you know going forward this is what they're gonna be doing very very cool it sounds very interesting we're gonna see what that's gonna do um it's set to be higher than the hard difficulty on ice road ice road i believe is chapter six the chapter six i, I think it's yeah it, it, it is it's chapter six i'm just i don't know maybe it's not <laughs> i'm pretty sure it is though i might be losing my mind um strength difference between legendary and epic elunes are going to basically oh i love how they say elune is simply not a flat stat game <clears throat> epic seven um elune is a highly skill based game with sometimes uh make some elunes overshine others due to their skill sets we do understand that there is a lot at stake investing in legendaries for any questionable elunes we will continue to balance them as we go Third balancing patch are scheduled for Mikazuki, Caroline, and Arson, and I hope Caroline finally becomes that true single target beast that she deserves. Legendaries will soon be worth their salt, and that's just basically um, saying that they're going to be worth the time and the investment. They're going to be worth your rubies that you used to summon for them. They're going to be worth the luck and excitement and hype behind pulling them and all that good stuff. So basically, they're just going to say legendaries will now truly feel legendary. Uh, when is Forge system being released? So basically, Taiwan already has a Forge system, but they're going to revamp it and change it up before they release it to Global and Korea. So that's probably the best way to go because they don't like the current way that's set up, so they want to make it better. So that's understandable why we don't have it yet. Now, the new mileage system that they might be doing, now I say might, this isn't a guarantee, is very interesting. So they're going to be keeping it at 9,000 points, but they might let it roll over. So basically, what does this mean? This means if you don't get up, you, let's say you summon on a new banner here that just came out, you only get like 4,000 points. When the next new banner comes out, you're still going to have those 4,000 points. So now you only need 5,000 more to get that hero. Or let's say that you only get 4,000 points on one banner, then the next banner, now your third banner that comes out, you're at 8,000 out of 9,000. So you're going to need 1,000 more points, and then you get that hero guaranteed. So that's really cool. I love the rollover. That is going to be a big feature for not only whales to encourage them to try and pull for more dupes, but it's also going to be good for free-to-plays to try and actually get that guaranteed 5-star at some point without feeling like they're throwing their rubies away. Very, very good. I love that. So hopefully that does come to fruition. That's really nice. Will you ever add Nick and Weiwei to someone's list? Of course, we're not going to do that. Those are really the only things that we have to chase right now um, in PvE. And the chase is um, definitely a nice grind. If you're a hardcore PvP player, you want to definitely go for that Nika. If you just want that overall go-to hero that just helps you do everything in the game, you want to go for that Weiwei. And both are free to play, technically. So, very nice. Of course, putting those on a banner would just make a lot of people irritated. Imagine all the people that busted their butt to get a plus 5, and then they just throw her in a banner. I'm pretty sure they'd be pretty ticked off. So I can definitely see why they're not going to do that. And that's definitely the right option. A right choice, I should say. Can we get more class aids? We are going to be doing that because they're going to be increasing the Lightyear Temple difficulty. So that's going to be awesome. Are you going to nerf Chloe Van? They're not going to be nerfing her. They're going to be just changing her up a little bit slightly for PvP. So she's not just going to completely nuking backlines easily. Uh, which is very, very helpful. Thank you for that. Because it's kind of sad to have a tank in your front row. Supposed to be there as a big body to help tank. And then you just get one-shotted anyone in the back row by a Chloe on defense. So it's it's never good. So hopefully they do change that up. Um, I like that. It's That's very cool. So uh, let's see here. Uh, air battle opponent gear hide. Um, some players are a little bit upset about people being able to see their gear. Some people don't care. I really don't care either way, to be honest. I don't think it's a big deal. I really, um, people that get kind of, you know, all knotted up in a bunch about that i just i don't see the point there i don't really see the anger there who cares you see my gear whatever um i'm not playing anyway i'm on defense 
<laughs> my my AI plays for me. I have no, I'm, I have no control of what's going on anyway. So if you see my gear, or you don't see my gear. Um, people are still gonna fight me at some point. It's just gonna happen. Um, you know, it is what it is. So I mean, it really doesn't matter to me. I know some people are like, but I could see your speed, so I can know what units to bring. I can counter you and make you lose points. But the thing is, you don't. Um, maybe they'll change it to where you just don't lose points if your defense team loses. You just lose points if you lose on attack, and you gain points if your defense wins. I don't know. Maybe they'll change it to that. Otherwise, it is what it is. Um, maybe if the player base gets really, really big and you're getting hit on hard, then I could see the point of maybe changing that to where people can see your gear, I guess. But as it is right now, you really, you know, your defense team really isn't costing you all that much, to be honest, in terms of points. Um, unless maybe if you're like really up there in high, high, high PvP and you're only playing a select few group of players over and over again maybe that maybe that's where this is coming from i don't know co-op content this will be covered in next week's Elune news cannot wait for that at all i'm so excited um new Elune release plan so they're going to be trying to release two or more heroes per month i would prefer that they do what they did with Majed, where they release one legendary hero one new epic hero and then release another banner for that whole month but it's just a, a rehashing of old units, like a rate up for tanks, a rate up for DPS, a rate up for support, a rate up for debuffers. Do that, honestly. I don't think we need two new legendary hero banners every month. That's just overkill, in my personal opinion. I would say just do what you did um, the past month. Just have a rate up banner for a for a certain type of character, tank, support, DPS, etc., and then release one new hero banner that brings one new legendary and one new epic. That is perfect. Because now you're playing the field for everyone. Free to plays can save up and try and go for at least one copy of the new legendary and one new epic hero, which of course will be added later on to fusions anyway. And it allows newer players to go and try and summon for a rate up banner for heroes that they may need of that type to help them try and get a jump start on their account. So either way, you're you're catering to the whales to get that new hero, you're catering to the veteran players that are free to play, and you're catering to the new players that are both whales and free to play. So everyone's getting a little bit a piece of the pie there if you do that kind of setup. So hopefully that's what they do going forward. Contents after max grant sending way away through quests. Basically after you plus five your way away, they're gonna try and set up new quest um things to chase like new things to chase for in your uh with your quest maybe it'll be just various rewards like rubies um you know light summons um summoning tickets um you know gold anything you know seeds maybe books whatever when will you be improving alliance buff uh we will notify the community once we finalize our plan on uh alliance buff improvements are going to be looking into that apparently why do you only push for nerfs instead of buffs? So I've already read all this, of course, so I'm trying to like paraphrase and, um, you know, somewhat just break it down quickly. I don't want to make you guys sit here for 30 minutes. So basically what they're saying here is they're not really nerfing a lot of these units. They're really just trying to make their skills work the way as they intended from the get-go, even though they weren't. So some of the skills that they put in there weren't working the way they wanted them to, so they're just trying to adjust them back to the way that they originally was meant to be used and utilized. Um, you know, a big example would be um, uh, Chloe's S2, ignoring resistances and stuff like that, or whatever that bug was. Um, there's also the Cardia S2, how it wasn't meant to be infinite. It was meant to just go base off her base attack, not her current attack. So some things like that, um, that they were just changing. So that's kind of what they're talking about. And there are quite a few units that they've already like somewhat gave a buff to um, or have changed in a more positive way. So I don't see the issue with that at the moment um do you have i think the only thing that was bad from this is chloe was or carolina was touched three times already and she's gonna be touched again so hopefully we're done with the caroline situation i don't know why i said chloe i meant caroline um do you have any plan on new content they've been basically releasing new content all the time you know every week or every two weeks with new events and stuff like that which is technically new content new new packages and stuff like that you could say um I feel like they're just more focused though on trying to fix all the bugs and stuff like that of the current po uh, the current content by polishing it up before they really re really want to release some big new expansion and stuff like that, which I completely agree with. You want to get rid of most of the bugs before you cause more bugs because every time you do a new update, you're going to just open up the floodgates for more bugs to occur. So you want to make sure you try and fix a lot of the past ones first before you just completely overwhelm the player base and the developers with way too many bugs. 
Uh, do CMs play Loon? Yes, they do. I absolutely know that for a fact. Personally, I know they play the game. They actually summon. They grind just like we do. Very, very cool. Um, do you know which part of a loon is so fun and boring? It's kind of weird to put that in the same question. Um, for me personally, um, the game, the, the most fun, the funnest part for me is boss battles. I feel like those are just the, the most fun because they're the ones that are the most aggravating, the most challenging. Um, sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. It just gets your blood going either in a positive or negative way, but it's drawing a reaction from you. The most boring thing in the game is leveling up fodder. I mean, there's just no way else I could put it. It's that simple. The most boring thing is definitely having to level up fodder through story mode. That's definitely the most boring thing. Um, why aren't you doing a Revy t-shirt community giveaway? Are you planning on making long sleeves? I, I feel like some of these questions probably could have been left out. These aren't really newsworthy, to be honest. Like, it's not. Um, we are planning on continuing to make Elune goods. Once we make more Elune goods, we will constantly share it with the community. I think people should be worrying more about the game succeeding than worrying about t-shirts. That's just my opinion. Um, so whoever asked that question, I don't know why. <laughs> we are planning to give away the uh, Revy t-shirt for events for the late September update. So for those of you who win that, you know, take a picture, put it on Instagram, and have fun with it. Uh, issue with standardized team, meta team. Uh, one standardized team is definitely not the direction that we intended. We will go through further in uh, internal discussion before making notice about this issue. So standardized team, what they're basically saying is they don't want one team to just rule the whole game. Which kind of is the case, because right now, you run Chloe and you run Weiwei in um, almost everything you do. And then you can run either Revy or you can run Balder. So, as your DPS, alongside Chloe. And that's pretty much the team that you're running for all content in the game right now. So I could definitely see what people are, are, are com where they're coming from with that. Uh, what kind of content is Mobius Dungeon? We're preparing Mobius Dungeon as an end game dungeon. Oh my goodness, you mean Tron 11 is in 12 is an end game? Nani? <laughs> I need some affinity stones. Oh, wait, that's the wrong end game. We will review making Elune Soul Stones collectible from contents outside explore stages. So, we're going to be getting Elune Soul Stones. There you go. Little sneak peek, I guess. Costume event result. In this event, we wanted to involve the community. Um, not really going to, that's not really something we need to talk about because we're just going to kill time talking about that. Seasonal event will start this Monday. Collect lucky pouch to acquire amazing seasonal background. Very, very cool. Surprise release transcend visual effect update. Transcends will gain special visual effects. I hope to get like some kind of cool aura that just floats around them. And when they do their skills, you just see all this crazy lighting effects and all that. And I, I just, I want to see explosions. I want to see effects, sound effects. I just want to see everything turned up to 10 because I think that's pretty awesome. And I think it should only be for plus five. It needs to feel special. So I feel like you have to have your unit plus five and it can only work for epics and legendaries. Actually, only for legendaries because you need to feel, you need to make legendaries feel even more special because it's way harder to plus five a legendary than an epic. So I feel like this should only be for epics, but they're playing very nice here and they're giving it to legendary and epics. I still personally feel like it should only be for legendary though because I feel like it needs to be special. But the fact they're doing for Epics too, I'm sure a lot of the free-to-plays are excited about that. So that's really cool. So gold is the legendary effects, purple is the epic. So I cannot wait to see what those special effects are going to look like. Cannot wait. Surprise release, Elune customizing dye, hair, outfit, and skin. Now this is next level. And you can see a little bit of it down here on the video. We'll go ahead and play it. Let you guys see it in action. You can see that they are using Unity 5. That's right, representing one of the two biggest mainstream engines out there. So you see there, they can change the skin, they can change the hair, they can change the clothes color. I like it. I like the dye system. It's very cool. I can make all my characters blue and say I'm Team Avatar. There you go. Team Aqua. Or I can make them all green. And then I can truly say that Chloe is a She-Hulk. <laughs> So you guys see the system in action there. Pretty cool stuff. I like it. You guys can check that out. Um, community title system. Honorable community members and influencers will gain special titles. So thanks for being a part of a loon. I th I'm assuming that would be for the Twitch streamers, the YouTubers, and the community managers. So very, very cool. And that's going to be it for me, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry it was kind of long. I tried to shorten it down as much as I could. Skimming over a lot of things. But if you guys like any of this stuff or you have more to say or whatever or at, need any questions answered, 
let me know in the comment section below or join us in a discord in the description below and uh yeah so are you guys hype my biggest takeaway from this is co-op is coming co-op is my biggest takeaway and i'm very very excited for that so we're gonna see what that's gonna entail very cool stuff a lot of stuff my throat hurts but we still got a couple more videos to make today until next time have an awesome day wherever you are as always don't forget to subscribe tick notifications so you don't miss a video till next time peace